Sometimes I just sit here and wonder. I wonder if people will ever understand how truly happy they could be if they quit caring so much about trivial things that literally do not matter. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is designed for people who wanna improve their mental health. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So today we are going to be talking Billie Eilish and this term industry plant that's been going around, gaining some traction. It's like everywhere I look these days. So. I was doing some research on some new videos and I just made a video about Billie Eilish and her fans and just kind of like um, depression and promoting, you know, depression and other solutions, all that. You can check out the info card, check that video out. Let me know your thoughts on it. But anyways, as I'm looking into Billie Eilish and some other people are popping up like someone named Baby Goth or whatever. And by the way, I am not their demographic, but this word industry plant keeps co coming up. Billie Eilish is an industry plant. Baby Goff is an industry plant. Post Malone is an industry plant. And I'm like, what the heck is an industry plant? Now I'm 33 years old. I'm not always hip and down with the lingo. So I did what any good older man would do. And I Googled that business, right? So anyways, according to Complex, an industry plant, they say, it's tricky to precisely define the merits of that accusation. In general, industry plant is a pithy derogative that we, parentheses, haters wield to imply that a rapper or singer is an upstart fraud, a record label puppet, a focus group tested vessel of creativity so-called. Any musician with a hazy or straight up fabricated origin story, a recent example is Post Malone, is to be regarded with such suspicion. And I'm sitting there like, who cares? <laughs> like, okay, so let me give you a little background, a little history on the music industry. Um, just from, you know, when, when I was born and, you know, artists that gained a lot of popularity. Um, and I'm sure this has happened for years and years and years and years since you know the dawn of like time when it comes to the music industry maybe even like actors and you know actresses and things like that so i grew up in the 90s and early 2000s and there was this guy named lou perlman now before i get started on lou perlman let me make it clear like dude is a piece of garbage all right but anyways like Famous, he was he was known for creating these famous boy bands that exploded, like NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys, that little, you know, tweens and teenagers everywhere would just go, ah, oh my God, right? And this dude knew how to put these groups together. I know we would all like to live in this fairy tale world where it's like, you know what? I bet the members of NSYNC or Backstreet Boys, they were like these childhood friends and they like grew up together just singing. And they're like, you know what, we're gonna start a boy band. But that's not how it happened. They created these groups. But you know, you know who did? You know who is not an industry plant? My boys, boys to men. Those dudes actually got together, grew up singing, and they did their thing. All right, but anyways, anyways. But yeah, this is not something new. This is not something new that is happening in the world. And it's important to kind of look at this. So anyways, like what does this have to do with our mental and emotional well-being? So I wanna share a little bit of my experience. I grew up with not that much. I grew up with a family that wasn't that great, you know, alcoholic mom, a dad who raised me, but he was constantly working. We didn't have much money or anything like that. And I was constantly looking at other people and I just hated. I got so upset that people were just handed things to them right? It upset me so much. Like, like, first off, I hated that my friends were handed a good family. They were handed, you know, a mother and father who loved each other and stayed together. Meanwhile, my parents got divorced at the age of four, right? Or I hated that these other kids, even if their parents were split up, at least they lived in the same city. I grew up in Las Vegas and my mom was in California, right? And I hated that they were just handed this good life. Then I, I, I grew up and I went to high school and my high school, it was like right in the middle of like two different um, like kind of areas of town. Like there was like the lower class, like, well, 
middle to lower class, right? And then there was like rich kids, okay? So I was in that middle lower class, okay? And like, I didn't get a car when I turned 16. I was still riding the bus or I would get rides from friends and everything like that. But the rich kids, like you would go to my school and even though like half of it was kind of hood and the other half was rich kids, like there was kids 16 years old and their parents would buy them like a brand new BMW, a brand new Benz. Some kids had SUVs, like all sorts of stuff. And I hated it. I couldn't believe, I'm like, you just got this hand it to you and then as I got older I hated when people like got into better schools or they got better uh, job offers and it was just seeming like like handed to them or like kids who had parents who were well connected here in Las Vegas and they got jobs handed to them because I didn't have any of these things but you know what you know what that was me that was Chris staying in the problem and not getting into the solution what I was was I was a dude sitting in self-pity never moving up in life because I kept being a hater that everybody else had everything handed to them. So when I went on this journey of improving my he mental health six and a half years ago, starting with me getting clean and sober, I realized that this world doesn't owe me crap. And what good is it doing me whining and complaining about how things were handed to other people. It does me absolutely no good. I stayed in that self-pity and that hater mentality for years. And when I finally, when I finally just started putting in the work, things started getting better, all right? This is something that we see with people everywhere. You might be someone struggling with this. You're so upset that things got handed to other people, right? But like, I see this happening with, um, you know, YouTube creators. It happened to me as a YouTube creator. When I was starting out my YouTube channel, I used to get so upset when I'm researching topics and looking up other videos and everything like that. And I see how just other people, like the algorithm just fell in love with them one day and just decided to just like explode one of their videos. And I'm just sitting here begging the algorithm, like algorithm, please show me some of that love. Just show me a little bit of that love, right? And it never happened. And you know what? When I stopped complaining about that and just started putting in the work, my channel started to grow, okay? There's something called an internal locus of control and then an external locus of control. People with an external locus of control, they're more likely to be depressed, anxious, and have lower levels of happiness, all right? Because they believe in their mind that they can't do anything to change the outcome of their situation. It's all based on external factors. But when I started to move to an internal locus of control, which I recommend all of you start thinking about, things started getting better. An internal locus of control is when I believe that my actions can create results, right? But the thing is that we get twisted in our mind is, is that we have a harder path so it's impossible. No, 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 no. We have a harder path, but it is possible, okay? When you start working hard at your craft, at your passion, whatever the hell it is, things start to happen. The problem with humanity is, is that we are just the most impatient, the most impatient SOBs ever. We want everything now. We don't wanna go through the struggle. We don't wanna go through the hustle. We don't wanna go through the hard work. This is something that I've seen as well with mental health as a whole, right? Like um, working at the treatment center, uh, working with thousands of people, like I saw this, I saw this over and over. I saw this in my own personal experience. I've seen this in the experience of friends and family members, other people who come to me for advice and for help. We want things now. Right? Like, for example, drug addicts and alcoholics, they get clean, they get sober, they want it now. They want it now. They want their family to forgive them, they want the job, they want the car, they want the house, they want the relationship, they want everything now, right? But this is a problem that humanity deals with, right? We just want everything handed to us, and then when we see something handed to somebody else, like the industry plants, we get upset about it because we didn't get that same opportunity. But here's the thing, here's my advice to all of you. Love that struggle. Love it, okay? Because like it builds up this resilience and plus you you have a better sense of, of self-satisfaction because you know things weren't handed to you. You worked your butt off for it. So what I would say to all of the other artists out there who are whining and complaining about these industry plants, put in the work. We are living in a time where social media is at your fingertips. If you have a cell phone, you can get your your art, your music, whatever it is, out to the entire world if you're willing to put in the work. And and if the the public, if the audience, if the, the community, if whoever it is does not receive it very well, then maybe you need to keep working on that craft and improve it. But the only way that's gonna happen is by you keep 
practicing, right? I started recording my videos. Like, go watch my first video on YouTube. It was recorded on my cell phone, like many of my first videos were, and I was so awkward and so uncomfortable and everything like that. That's one of the reasons why I pump out content is because it's helped me be more comfortable on the camera. So if you're an artist who is complaining about like Billie Eilish being an industry plant or Baby Goth being an industry plant, work harder. Okay, I know that sounds cliche and like, oh yeah, just work harder. But know that you can put in certain amounts of effort and get certain results, okay? And trust me, at the end of the day, you will feel a lot, a lot better about where you've uh, where you've gotten to because you put into the put in the work and it wasn't handed to you. All right. So, anyways, what's the moral of this video? Quit being a hater. Put in some work, especially when it comes to your mental health. Your mental health isn't just going to improve magically by sitting there and complaining about how great everybody else's life is, all right? But anyways, let me know your thoughts on this subject of industry plans down below. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, get exclusive perks, benefits, get involved in our Q&A, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.